team using a series of whistles. One whistle means really neat black oh, mark that looks like an eye. Thank you. Eyes of the park. They serve popcorn and coke on the train ride. Only 130 miles away from the eastern slopes of the Rocky Mountains, they are I believe they're putting water in the train. It's about five o'clock in the evening. It's very chilly outside. The fog is starting to set back in. I think it's going to rain tonight. So there's Fred waiting for me. He's so sweet. Hey, baby. You old train traveler, did you make it back over? I did. Let's go get a steak. Okay. Little baby pine cones. So we're at Minuteman Missile Site Delta 09. It's just off of I-90, and this is a self-guided phone tour. So I believe over there is we're going to see a, a missile in a silo underground. I'm not sure. But the self-guided tour was talking about take a look behind you at I-90. And for years, travelers uh, traveled this road never realizing that this was, uh, they said, ground zero for World War III. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty interesting um, self-guided phone tour. You see Fred listening to the phone tour as we're walking up to this missile. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you can see this, but it's a big silo under the ground and a huge missile is up in there. Can you see that? Engines produced over 235,000 pounds of thrust that propelled its payload to a speed of four miles per second. Inside the nose of the reentry vehicle was a Whiskey 56 thermonuclear warhead that produced an explosive yield of 1.2 megatons, more than 80 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. Oh my gosh. And yet, this missile was just one of ten in Delta flight. This thing and is there huge. were 15 missile flights of 10 missiles each here in the 44th Missile Wing, dispersed across 13,500 square miles of western South Dakota. This was only one of six Minuteman wings providing deterrent coverage of 1,000 ICBMs throughout the United States. It's crazy to think that this is what could have started or been a retaliation to the start of World War III. Wow. Underground cables connected the control center to the 10 cycles of its flight. This command was received through the umbilical. You can see this thing that's on the tracks. I bet that, that lid would have slid open, exposing the missile. Oh my gosh. We'll take a picture of this. They said that they thought that this was a good location for it because of the very low density of population and that if this was going to be a missile site and it was ever a target, this would be the least amount of casualties. They have hundreds of these silos. This state, North Dakota, Montana, Colorado, this area of the country. So up here is where we take the um, Delta 9 tour that we have to make reservations for. It's interesting that these sites are all down dirt roads. You wouldn't think that such a 
a powerful sophisticated sophisticated defense mechanism is just at the end of this dirt road you can see that around this facility there is absolutely nothing there is the facility there and then there is nothing for miles but just ranch land prairie land there's nothing out here and then this little dirt road that leads to this very sophisticated defense system. Here's the, here's the building. Minutemen Missile National Historic Site Delta One. So this is the Mission Control Center. Nice to meet you guys. I am, this is my first season working for the National Park oh, Service. Cool. I, like I said, I volunteered at Herbert Hoover National Historic Site last year. This is my first paid gig. Mm. <laughs> this so is the facility the manager's bedroom. Guys that actually often consisted of any higher ups in the Air Force coming out to check things. So the number four on the door means there was explosives, explosives in this room and they were stored their guns in this metal filing cabinet here. Apparently they were issued M16s. Also the windows were blacked out because this was the night shift so they would sleep during the day and they needed a dark room. So they actually had five refrigerators in the kitchen and they were all locked uh, due to fear of poisoning. Only the cook had the key to the refrigerators. Um, just talk about crew members. And that capsule, that's like the command capsule, right? Yep, so that's where the two so missile ears sat. This um, is the rebar they used to construct the command the capsule. Yep. That's very heavy, my word. So if you know anything about construction, this is number 18. Mm. Two of these Minuteman Missile 2 missiles could explode more or have more damage caused than all of the missiles in um, World War II combined on both sides. All the bombs. All the bombs, thank you. 31 foot ladder. 31 foot ladder down to the control center. So this is the third site off exit 131 and this is the museum and visitor center. Now they have a really nice gift shop. Nuclear war survival skills. <laughs> oh. So in the museum, it has a diagram of that um, the launch control center uh, that we just toured, and this was this is a seat, uh, I guess that the the guys would sit in. Um, the guys that would actually launch those missiles. The other guys around and he means business, so get going. You've just got time to save yourself. Drop whatever you're doing. Find the nearest hole and make like a mole. If there's no underground shelter handy, pick a room in a good building close to the ground. It ought to be airtight and light proof. Remember what to do, friends. Now tell me right out loud. What are you supposed to do when you see the flash? Wow. And they have displays of the rebar and the hardened uh, telecommunication cable that we just saw in our um, tour that we reserved. So that tour that we took a few minutes ago, you have to reserve tickets in advance. Only six people are allowed uh, per group. We just had four in our group. I think the other two people called and so they wouldn't come. Oh look, here is a piece of the Berlin Wall. Wow. My goodness. That's amazing. This talks about when Khrushchev told Western leaders, we will bury you. Uh, he meant that communism would inevitably 
prevail over capitalism, but many in the West thought he was talking about the arms race. This states that uh, the Soviet uh, missiles programmed for U.S. targets could deliver 10 megatons, or almost 10 times the yield of a Minuteman II missile. And then it says at its height, the Soviet uh, arsenals targeting the U.S. totaled 1,400. And then here is a picture of the U.S. Minuteman missile. And then this is the uh, Soviet Union missile. I'm surprised that it's so much larger and they had so many more. That's very surprising. Maybe that's why they said they would bury us. So this is interesting. Um, this is starts 1945. The red is the Soviet Union. The blue is the United States. And that's the number of atomic bombs. So you can see that the United States at this point has more than the Soviet Union. Quite a bit more. You can see the Soviet Union's over here in the United States. Wow. But then about 1978, Soviet Union has quite a bit more than the United States. In 1983, this is when Reagan was president. Gorbachev becomes leader of US of the Soviet Union in 85. And then in 1987, Reagan and Gorbachev sign uh, a nuclear treaty. And then the number of atomic bombs starts to lower and then it becomes very equal in 2008, 2009. And then this says in 2010, 450 Minutemen three missiles are still at ready on the Great Plains. Hmm. Pretty interesting display. This is the warhead on one of those missiles. So all of the um, combustion, I guess, is in the tip. And then behind the tip is the, um, the missile guidance system. And then behind that is the, the rocket part of the missile. But the tip is the warhead. So we just really enjoyed our tour of of this museum and the lady at the counter said the tour that we just went on uh, that they are sold out until July and this is what May 27th so you really need to book those in advance if, if you'd like to to go view that facility just one more quick note about this the Google Maps will definitely send you in the wrong direction Google Maps told me that this facility was about 15 miles from our uh, Sheraton Lake uh, campground when in fact this facility is just west of the town of Wall. You can see the Badlands right over there. So the Minuteman facilities are very close to the Badlands. We ate dinner at Perkins and we're headed back to the campsite from the Minuteman missile um, facility. Look how foggy it got. It's six o'clock at night. This, it, it gets foggy like this just very easily. We've been in fog quite a bit since we've been here. Whenever there's the least little hint of rain, it gets foggy like this. Lucy's chilling out on the center console as we make our way back to base camp. She's such a sweet little girl. So this is our 15th day of camping. We are now at Robe Lake Campground. Uh, we're still in the Black Hills. We just moved a little bit further north. We set the tent up. We were able to take um, kind of like a, a makeshift bath. Fred washed his hair. Um, because this site 
has no electricity uh, nor running water either. Uh, there is the vault toilet, which I refuse to use because it's disgusting. So I do have my little um, composting style toilet set up in there. This time we put Lucy on this little dog run. Uh, she really is liking that. Gives her a little bit of freedom. And this is uh, the first day in several days that we've had really nice weather. I finally got to take my hat, glove, and coat off and it feels great. I haven't really been showing too much of myself on these videos lately. Um, mainly just because it's it's been a little uncomfortable. This has been a pretty hard camping trip, primarily due to the weather. But tonight, uh, today, it's beautiful out. It's, it's been in the, the very low 40s at night, perhaps even dipping into the 30s. But the sun is out right now. It feels great. We're at a new campsite. I'm heating up the tuna noodle casserole for lunch, and then uh, we're gonna head into Deadwood. We're really looking forward to that. I've been, been looking forward to that since the start of the trip, so probably eat dinner uh, somewhere in Deadwood. We made it to Deadwood. So this is Mount Moriah Cemetery. This is where Wild Bill Hickok and Calamity Jane were buried. This is a beautiful cemetery, but be sure that you drive up here. There's a nice parking lot with several spaces. It would be quite a hike to try to make it up here on foot. Even once you get to the entrance gate, it's quite a hike back to the, some of the grave sites. This is a large cemetery. We have found Wild Bill's grave and Calamity Jane's grave. You know, when Wild Bill was killed, he was carry he he was holding a hand of what aces and eights, right? Yep. And then today, that same hand of aces and eights is still known as the dead man's hand. So if you're ever playing poker and you get a hand of aces and eights, you might want to look behind you. Fred is enjoying it here. He's taking his own pictures with his camera. Actually, here's a grave from 1847. I thought the town of Deadwood was established like 1886. So how was this grave from 1847? I don't know. So here is a bust of Wild Bill. He looks like he was a good-looking fellow. Uh, J.B. Hickok died 1876. Hmm. Okay, so my years are messed up. If he died 1876, the town was already here. I was reading something on the internet that this town was established in 1886, so that couldn't be right. So it says that he died 1876 by pistol shot. He was only 39 years old. He said that this says Custer was lonely without him. What does that mean? Custer was lonely without him. Were he and Custer friends? I think they were. Huh. Two Yankees. He fought in the Civil War on the Union side. Hickok did? Yeah. And then here is Calamity Jane's grave. Man, she was really buried right next to him, wasn't she? Yep. And he, a Wild Bill was married at the time to a woman that owned a circus. Ran a circus. She or ran Hickok a circus too. when he died. So, and Calamity Jane was buried right next to him at her request. Pretty interesting. Calamity Jane died 1903, many years later. He died 1876, she died 1903. 47. 
She died when? 1903. She was 47 years old. Oh. How did Calamity Jane die? No. It's probably cirrhosis of the liver. <laughs> is it running? Yep. All you gotta do is put me in the view. Well, you're in view. So this is Wild Bill Hickok's gravesite, and Calamity Jane is right behind him. And Elisa is a modern day Calamity Jane. Hardly. <laughs> So this is Fred standing next to Wild Bill Hickok's gravesite and Calamity Jane. It's interesting on Calamity Jane's grave it also says Mrs. M. E. Burke. So was she married to someone else? And then it says Calamity Jane, Martha Jane Burke. Did you enjoy visiting this gravesite? I sure did. I've read a lot about him. Before he came up here... He to Deadwood. A, to Deadwood. He was a town marshal down in one of those cow towns in Kansas, I think. Either Abilene, one of those places down there. And those cowboys coming up from Texas were always a rowdy crew. So one night there was a ruckus out in the street, I guess a fight. He went to uh, break it up. I'm not sure if he had to shoot somebody or draw down on somebody, I, I forget. But un unknown to him, his deputy came up behind him and shouted his name, which startled him. And he turned and shot his own deputy, killed him. And then he quit the law enforcement business yes. after that? He was very much disturbed over that. And then he came to Deadwood? Came to Deadwood to drink and gamble. McCall, the one who shot him, they were friends, but that morning, or the night before, the day before maybe, Hickok won all the McCall's money in a poker game, which really pissed off McCall. So the next day, he knew where Wild Bill played, which table he played in, or played at, in saloon number 10. Went in there and shot him in the back of the head and killed him. So this cemetery has a visitor center and a gift shop. They do have a little trolley here in Deadwood that I'm sure offers guided tours. Uh, this is Main Street. Oh, it's busy. There's quite a few people here. Franklin Hotel, that's where that guy told us yep. was a really great place to eat. Okay. Look at all these people. There oh must my be God. something going to happen here. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, Jack McCall will come to the show for a while. Bill Hickok in the side of the saloon number 10. Now, by doing that, he kind of put Deadwood on the map for something other than There's the Elks Lodge in Deadwood. So I was just standing here waiting on Fred to come out of the Harley shop and I see this gaming store right across the street. So it says, uh, new hot slots, play roulette. They're right there. It's on that side. So I guess this is a gaming town. Cheryl and Frida, we are thinking about you two here and how much you guys would love this place. 
a lot this is a very fun town so this is where wild bill was shot this is the number 10 saloon well i think you guys know who i am right wild bill that's exactly right well james butler here got most folks nowadays they do like to call me wild bill like i said i'm gonna tell you some stories about myself and I Calamity Now, I also know you've been starting and spreading some rumors about myself and Calamity maybe somehow being romantically involved. Not true. Come on, didn't I just tell y'all I was married? Man, them rumors get back to Agnes. I'm in all sorts of trouble. Besides, have you seen her? She looks like a man, she dresses like a man, she drinks like a man, she curses like a man, she, she smells like a man. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. But you know, I probably shouldn't talk bad about Calamity though, because for all the problems that she has, well, she may very well be the coarsest woman on the history of this planet. But she's got a heart of gold. You'll step back in time to witness what happened on that fateful day, August 2nd, 1876, when Wild Bill Hickok was gunned down by crooked nosed Jack McCall. 1875. This place allows dogs to come in. Three miles up the creek. This outline of stretch that was destined to become known as the richest placer claim area, not only in North America, They're very nice but here. the entire Western Hemisphere. News of this bonanza leaked out, the rush right, was on, resulting in a flood of mankind. Soon, a shifty drifter known as Jack McCall entered the saloon. Bill quickly turned while drawing his gun. Recognizing McCall as a newcomer to town, he greeted him with the friendly, Howdy, Jack. Then reholstered his gun and resumed the game. Jack slowly circled. There was a friendly argument between them, and while Bill remarked, all right, I bet two. You in for two? Upon returning directly behind Wild Bill, suddenly yeah, Jack I'm McCall... Ball and I'm take... take that, dang you! The bullet struck Bill on the back of the head, coming out of his left cheek, and lodged in Captain Massey's left arm. Yeah. This is a pretty cool little bar. This is where we saw the reenactment of Wild Bill's shooting. I like it here. Oh look, they're all playing card games back here. This is a really cool place. So this is saloon number 10. That's where Wild Bill Hickok was murdered and that's the saloon that we were just visiting. And believe it or not, they allowed our dogs to come in there. Um, so Fred and I were able to sit down and have a beer with our dogs. I love that place. There's Mustang Sally's. Deadwood is an awesome town can't believe it. I didn't expect I'd like it this much. Is it a little touristy? Yes, it is. But there's also this air of authenticity that just makes the touristy part go away. Deadwood's an awesome town, isn't it? Yep. Back there in the number 10 saloon with the reenactment was pretty accurate as well. It was. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. That reenactment was exactly the same story that you were telling. And that's very cool that you just read that book on Wild Bill Hickok. So, this is like their central square. And they are going to have a band there. Look at that. big bands. Look at all the equipment and the speakers. 
wow. Right across the street from the Franklin Hotel. I think this is the restaurant we're eating at, Legend Steakhouse in this hotel. So this is inside the hotel. The restaurant's downstairs, Fred? Oh yeah. So I got this caprese chicken with wild rice. This, I believe, is the best thing I've had to eat this whole vacation. And Fred got the sirloin with the potato. So here's a picture of William Taft in the restaurant, and it says he stayed at the Franklin Hotel in 1911. This is a really nice place. It's a picture of Wild Bill. Have a good night. Thank you, you too. So if you see this big hill, it's right at the edge of town. This town is it's built in a valley. Here is a very fun street. We made it to Sturgis. Sturgis, South Dakota. Let's go check this town out.